A new report into BBC bias on Israel's assault on Gaza has been released. And for those who've been watching the BBC's coverage of the war over the last year, its findings may come as a surprise. This is how The Telegraph wrote up the report. The BBC breached its own guidelines 1,500 times over the war, with its coverage heavily biased against Israel. The report was compiled using artificial intelligence to analyse around 2,000 articles published by the BBC in both English and Arabic, as well as transcripts of hundreds of hours of audio and video output. ChatGBT was asked to rate the items in the dataset based on whether it created sympathy for Israel or Palestine. According to the report, the AI found that the BBC's output was three to six times more sympathetic to Palestine than to Israel. The study also did some quantitative analysis, counting up how many times certain words were used in relation to Israel versus Palestine. Now, it found that the BBC linked the phrase war crimes to Israel nearly 130 times versus 30 times to Hamas. Genocide was linked to Israel nearly 300 times, but just 19 times to Hamas. Um, it was a similar result for the phrase breach of international law, whereas crimes against humanity was linked to Hamas a little more than to Israel. Now, this, to me, seems like a stupid method, right? So you've, you've got ChatGPT to read a load of articles and said, you, Mr. AI, do you feel more positive about Israel or Palestine after reading this? Now, the thing to know, especially I saw that sort of, that chart on, on Twitter, and it just struck me as completely ridiculous. Of course, there are more stories that associate Israel with well, genocide because it was a case at the International Criminal Court, or war crimes because Israel are literally killing people every day, right? Hamas did what they did on one day, October the 7th, right? There were lots and lots of reports about that. I don't think anyone can suggest that that was an event in the world which was undercovered, which was underreported, right? It clearly wasn't. And actually, by the way, lots of the stuff which was reported about it was, was, was spurious. Lots of it obviously wasn't spurious. Lots of it was, was, was real in terms of the outrages which were committed. But there were lots of superiors reporting about that. I think, you'd be, I think you'd really struggle to suggest that the British media, the Western media, didn't take October the 7th seriously. Right? But they've said because they've put the word genocide or war crimes next to Israel more often than Hamas, um, that shows bias. There's a simpler explanation, which is that Israel have been doing what they've been doing for months, and they've killed, well, now about 40 times as many people as were killed on October the 7th. Um, it is, of course, worth bearing in mind the report looked at articles published between October the 7th last year and February 7th this year. Um, so in terms of that word genocide, this is key, it did include the period when South Africa successfully filed a case against Israel of um, genocide at the International Court of Justice. So successful in the in the sense um, that the International Court of Justice said they would take this up, um, not successful in the sense that the International Court said this is genocide, but that was never the intention anyway. Um, that was, of course, a pretty newsworthy event. You can't complain that the BBC put the word genocide with Israel in a bunch of articles when Israel were being taken to the International Criminal Court or the International Court of Justice, sorry, um, for genocide. The report also tries to back up the AI findings with the assessment of six human reviewers. Um, they agreed with the AI findings, um, though the report points out that they were, quote, mostly Jewish people with personal connections to Israel. Um, so not necessarily um, unbiased themselves. Um, the BBC has responded to the report, saying it will carefully consider its findings, um, but expressing concerns about its methodology, which seemed very much fair enough. The spokesperson for the corporation also said, quote, we don't think coverage can be assessed solely by counting particular words divorced from context. The report also singles out two journalists for being especially biased. Now, this is what they claim, at least. Um, they are Lise Doucette and Jeremy Bowen, so two very senior journalists at the BBC on Jeremy Bowen. Um, the Telegraph reports this. It cites, this is about this report into BBC supposed bias, it cites several examples, including a podcast last November in which Mr. Bowen stated, Hamas is an Islamic resistance movement we've seen in the past few weeks has a military strategy. That's just true. And News at 10 report last October in which he said, and a News at 10 report last October in which he said, Hamas will try and use hit and run guerrilla tactics against a much more powerful army. There's no bias there. They are a guerrilla army. They use guerrilla tactics. And the Israeli army is much more powerful than Hamas. Of course, unless you speak in the language of Hamas are evil, bad terrorists, 
Israel, good country, um, then you're seen as as biased. And that seems to be what's being suggested here. Um, they go on, it compares this to Mr. Bowen stating on a News at 10 report last October, Israel has settled hundreds of thousands of Jews in defiance of international law. And in a podcast that month, I saw the huge amount of force that they, so Israel, have there and the massive amount of physical damage they've done, not to mention the loss of life. But despite all of that, Hamas is still fighting. It claims Mr. Bowen has also compared Israel's offensive to Gaza to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, including in a BBC article in November last year in which he stated Israel is on course to have killed as many Palestinian civilians in just over a month as Russia has killed in Ukraine since February 2022. Now, everything they pointed out there is just completely true. I would say fairly balanced. Um, defending his colleagues, senior BBC foreign correspondent John Simpson said this. The BBC says it has serious questions about the methodology of the attack on BBC reporting of Gaza in today's Sunday Telegraph. Jeremy Bowen and Lise Doucette, who are singled out for vicious criticism, are known worldwide as two of the finest correspondents in world journalism. Ash, a couple of questions for you here. I mean, what do you make of this report? I found that chart completely laughable. Um, I suppose as well, though, you know, on a more fundamental level, are they, is this just what pro-Israel people do? And is it just a, a mirror image of what we do as people who are critical of Israel when we're sort of all saying, oh, the BBC is really biased. The BBC say, look, we're somewhere in between. We're getting attacked from both sides and surely we're doing something right. Well, I think the first thing you've got to look at is the fact that this is part of a strategy on behalf of pro-Israel advocates across the global north and in particular in English speaking countries, Britain and America, where there is a concerted effort on behalf of well-resourced organizations, often with close connections uh, to the Israeli embassy in these respective countries to monitor mainstream media coverage of Israel and lodge complaint after complaint after complaint of, of, of what are largely fact-based news items. Now, from the examples that you can see in this report, the objection seems to be that unless you describe Hamas as somehow a subhuman, demonic, barbaric, and you use actively incredibly negative language to describe them factually and to try and provide a dispassionate analysis, that is itself a expression of bias in favor of Hamas or, or bias against Israel. So what it does is it, it defines bias as anything which isn't explicitly pro-Israel or, 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 um, or almost uh, uh, cartoonishly anti-Hamas. You have to get all those caveats in before you can discuss Hamas in, in any way possible. So the project is to uh, you know, d define these terms in such a way that it makes it impossible to tell the truth about what's happening uh, in Israeli politics, in terms of Israeli military strategy, and also in terms of Hamas military strategy, because you're, you're tying up media organizations in vexatious complaints all the time. That's the strategy. Now, I can understand how the vantage point of the BBC is they say, well, Look, these uh, pro-Israel advocates are ideologically motivated people, and 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 pro-Palestinian advocates are ideologically motivated people. So if everyone is yelling at us that that's correct, well, you you have to look at the basis of complaints. Now, the complaints which are being lodged against the BBC from the Palestinian side are looking at differences not in quantity of coverage, but what language is being used to describe the same thing? So the passive voice being used when the IDF kill Palestinians. It's like Palestinians killed after explosion, no one can really say why, in a headline when it was an Israeli airstrike. Or using um, quite loaded words like uh, massacre uh, to describe the October 7th attacks and you know military operation uh, to describe what is being carried out in Gaza. Now what that implies is, is a difference and a value judgment being made in, in certain kinds of violence. It's not creating, okay, we're going to describe all acts of violence and all military operations uh, in these ways. It's actually about creating a hierarchy. So that's where I think you've got to look at the substance of the complaint complaints of what they are, rather than just saying, ah, well, you know, it's coming from two sides and one is a mirror image of the other. I don't, I don't think that they are. Um, and also the the uh, last thing that I suppose uh, I would say is that there is something 
something comical about saying, okay, well, we we fed all these uh, you know, news items through an AI and it came out with an unfavorable image of Israel. That's that's indicating that there's bias in those news articles rather than we exist in a reality where even if you don't agree that what Israel is doing in Gaza is a genocide, I very strongly believe that it is a genocide, but even if you don't believe it is, there is a huge asymmetry in the loss of life, huge asymmetry in terms of the, the power differential and a huge asymmetry in terms of uh, you know military capabilities. Um, that to describe those things factually, um, that that it you you could only be biased, right? You could only be biased if you come up with the negative opinion of that description of reality. It's only because that there's bias going on, rather than it is a description of reality which would lead you towards a negative view of Israel. Because if you kill tens of thousands of civilians, including women and children, and you have children regularly. Uh, being taken to the hospital with sniper wounds to the head. Well, maybe if you learn about these things, you would have a negative view of Israel. That that's a reflection of reality. It's not a reflection of bias. Bias. Um, I suppose the last, very very last thing I'd say is that one of the things that's really important to remember about the pro-Israel strategy is that they've employed what is often known as the electric fence strategy. So they make the cost of describing what Israel is doing so high. Right, create so much trouble and headache and hoopla that it it, it creates a climate of self censorship amongst media organisations. So that's the point of reports such as these. Um, I don't think it's necessarily to be taken seriously as a report, but to contribute an environment where journalists self censor and editors preemptively um, censor or augment their editorialising uh, of such news pieces because they don't want the hassle. I think it is really telling what they've chosen as sort of the offending sentences from Jeremy Bowen. Like the idea that Hamas could have a military strategy is itself offensive, right? These have to just be irrational, raving, barbaric lunatics. And and, and to even sort of rationalise what they're doing in any way, not to justify, but to rationalise what they're doing, is itself an act of bias. Now, we, I mean, I, I think most people who who watch this show will recognise that the the approach we have is very critical of what Israel are doing, right? Um, I don't necessarily think that's bias. I, I personally just think that's sort of describing what's going on. But I mean, if you watch it, we're clearly, you know, a lot more negative about the Israeli government than we are about Palestinian resistance movements, let's say, um, or we talk about that more. But we've never sort of suggested Israel doesn't have a strategy. Like, I'm always actually quite firm about this. You know, Israel aren't sort of evil lunatics motivated by sort of this 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 sort of bizarre, irrational desire to destroy things. No, they they have a strategy. They want more land, right? They want more land and they don't want to have to share it with the Palestinians. Right? I don't think they are punishing Palestinians. I mean, you know, there, there might be some people here and there who are just sadistic, but I don't think Israeli state policy is driven by sort of lunatic barbarism. I think it's driven by rational self-interest of a particular project, which is an expansionary one, right? I We rationalize what Israel are doing all the time. That's not to justify it, but it's what's going on here is that the pro-Israel people think if we rationalize both sides, you know, if we, if we see both sides as, as humans with, with normal human interests, well, not normals too loaded, with, with understandable or comprehensible, let's say, that, I think both sides have comprehensible human interests at play, then maybe people will end up uh, sympathizing more with the Palestinians and therefore we have to make one of them sort of humans that we can identify with and understand their motives and the other bar like barbarians who who don't even have logic which seems to be what's going on here i would also say that on this show whenever we sort of obviously we do talk about media bias quite a lot i'm always and i think you all notice this sort of if you look at our segments on this kind of thing i'm always a lot more sympathetic to the journalists on the ground i'm even from the western media outlets right i think jeremy bowen is a good journalist um, and when I have complaints about how this is covered in, in Western media, it's much more, obviously, I think it's perfectly fine to criticize a journalist who is on the ground in a war zone. I don't think that should be taboo or out of bounds. But I think where you see the bias in Western media is so much more when you get into the newsroom in London or New York or Washington than it is when you have these people on the ground. Because the journalists on the ground who've spent lots of time in 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 Palestine, as Jeremy Bowen and Lise Doucette have, they they do I think, report reasonably well. I'm sure you can criticize them here and there. Uh, 
Um, but it's not the same sort of dehumanizing bias that you see sometimes um, in TV studios and in, of course, you know, newspaper comment pages.